everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Roxanne and today I'm just going to be going over a few of the books that I recently read. So I have been in a bit of a reading slump but I feel like I'm getting out of it so I'm going to start with the first book I read in May and then I just read absolutely nothing else. June I also read nothing and then finally in July I started reading books again. So I'm going to start with the first book that I read in May. So this is one I've already talked about but it's Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo and this is her first adult book um, and it's also like a kind of fantasy series. It was released end of last year I think and I gave it four out of five stars. So in this story we follow Alex who is, she lives a pretty rough life. She drops out of school early, she's raised by a single mother, she doesn't have the easiest life which is why she drops out. She gets involved in drugs and alcohol and then is the lone survivor of just an unsolved mass homicide. Alex is then approached by these mysterious benefactors and she receives a full scholarship to one of the world's most elite universities, which is Yale. Alex is obviously asking herself a lot of questions as to why this is happening and why her. Then she also gets tasked with monitoring all the activities of the secret societies at Yale. The people in these societies, people who were in the societies, are known as very powerful rich people. Some of them are politicians, some of them are famous Hollywood stars, they're business people, Wall Street businessmen. So there's a lot of powerful people in the societies or a lot of pe powerful people come from these societies. Um, but throughout the book we kind of realize that a lot of these societies are busy with a lot of darker things, more sinister activities than we le first led to believe or than Alex is first led to believe. Before you pick up this book I should say there's a lot of trigger warnings, um, namely sexual assault, alcohol abuse, drug abuse and just kind of graphic body horror. Um, the body horror doesn't occur too often but it is there and it's quite graphic when it does occur. I found issue with the initial world building. It's pretty dense and we just get dumped with a lot of information at first which is understandable for fantasy series um, but it was quite dense which is why I can't give this book 5 out of 5 stars. If that is a really big stumbling block for you I would not suggest this book but for me you know it, it is there to help you get to know the world so it's there for a reason. It isn't enjoyable but it's there and we get through it and we understand the world more. I think at this stage I have a way clearer understanding of the world but that is a very big thing. <laughs> it definitely took away a bit from my enjoyment of the book. While I found the world building to be a bit info dumpy and quite dragging I thought it was very interesting in setting the the dark mysterious atmosphere that I think such a book requires. When it comes to our characters I have my most favorite characters in this book where this only based on characters I would have given this book a 5 out of 5. I love Alex who's our main character she's definitely just one of my favorite main characters that I've ever read about ever I think. She like I have a, I really like Jude Duarte from The Cruel Prince because she's a very she's an unlikable main character I think but I love her and I find her very relatable and it was the same thing with Alex I thought she was very relatable I found her relatable um obviously she <laughs> goes through things that I will never go through mainly the magic things but you know she still manages to just be a really great character that captured my heart I also love Darlington I'm sure you've heard of Darlington because everyone just has a huge crush on him he is kind of um, Alex's mentor at the start of the book he's just a great character obviously he's there to kind of explain to Alex how everything works and to us as well but he's just such a smart character he's so caring and kind and he's just a great character same with Dawes um, she's also in the society with Alex monitoring the other secret societies but she's just as lovable of a character so definitely the ensemble cast that we get in this book I thought was brilliant and I really enjoyed reading about their relationships their friendships all the discussions conversations they had the way they interact with each other. I found it very entertaining, especially those three that I specifically mentioned. Another thing that I personally really liked about the girl is that Alex is a brown girl. Because, you know, I just, I liked seeing that. Obviously not everyone would find that that interesting or that relatable, but I personally, as a brown girl, do. Maybe that's also part of the reason why I just liked Alex so much. So I highly recommend Ninth House actually. I don't think it's for everyone but if you are into dark fantasy I think give it a shot. I believe the second book is only supposed to come out in 2021 and I'm just like I needed the second book the second I finished this one because it I can't speak about this. I needed that book. 
the next book I read only after a very very long time because you know this is kind of where my slump started but I should say my reading slump did not start with Ninth House okay I read another book after Ninth House that I never finished and that was a book guilty for my slump but also I feel like the world hello give a girl some understanding whatever the next book I read was Pet by Akweke Amezi and I don't even know where to start on this book. I don't really know what my thoughts are on this book. I really loved it. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. The reason I like it is that it's written in a very poetic style, which is something that I truly, truly love. Also, um, this is Amazie's first young adult book. They, all the other books are adult books, I believe. So this was like their first, their first dip into young adult slash middle grade. Um, I'm pretty sure this one is classified as young adult but it kind of felt a little bit middle gradey to me but also very adulty the the classification of this book is a bit weird for me but it's written in a very lyrical way kind of just like a dream world um speaking of dream world these people kind of do live in this utopia or at least that's what they all say this they live in this town called lucille and in this town all evil has been gotten rid of like there is no more evil in this world they don't specifically say what this evil is, but the evil is referred to as monsters. And they kind of give us hints as to what this is, and it definitely includes sexual assault, but they never say it, like, outright. And I think that is also, if a child is writing this, just to make them understand a little bit better without specifically saying what is happening, or what these evils are, what these monsters are doing. Then, um, Jan, who is our main character, also it is good to remember that our main character is a trans girl, a black trans girl which is just something you don't see that often in books at least now you're starting to see it a bit more but you know it's not very common also one of um jam's friends has three parents they're in a polyamorous relationship and uh, um one of the parents whisper is non-binary so there's a lot of representation i think in this book which is always a fantastic thing jam meets pet and pet basically tells jam that they are still monsters or there's at least one monster left in the seal and pet has come to get rid of this monster so that's what the story is about but it's a very like i don't know how to say this but it's a very deep book there are many layers to it you can kind of sit this book and analyze each and every paragraph and come up with so many hidden meanings in this book at least that's what i think i might be like very english teacher right now just adding on things that aren't there but i thoroughly believe there's a lot in this book it's very short but it still tells a very powerful story when we pretend to be blind when we are blind and we ignore cries for help we're just letting abuse continue we're letting violence continue and this book is just a reminder that we should really speak out about the evils that we see um and especially now with the save our children movement happening like this book becomes very important i believe this book basically says like are you brave enough to look for the monsters you know that's what the book is saying i think i think there's a lot of interpretations of this book a lot of ways that you can look at it but that is just what i personally thought of it again i thought it was really good and the language was just so beautiful and poetic and i personally like a poetic story then i finished a book that i've actually wanted to read for a very long time and i actually wanted to read it during the asian readathon but then i just was not in the mood for reading but i finally finished ring by koji suzuki so this is a japanese author and i'm sh pretty sure a lot of you have already seen the movie whether it be the japanese movie or the remake that was made in hollywood the english movie that was the first one i saw and it freaked me out as a child this book definitely didn't freak me as much out as much as the movie did i think the book was better maybe a little bit but instead of being a horror which it is it's classified as a horror but i think it's more of a thriller mystery so this book is also the first in the series but i do think you can read it alone and you don't have to necessarily continue with the series i only read this one i don't know if i'm gonna continue with the series but at this stage it's not like i don't have a strong desire it's not on my to-do list anytime soon because this was enough and it was still a great book so in the ring we follow this journalist who discovers that he's a uh, niece here his niece died in some very unusual circumstances and then he finds out accidentally or <laughs> by chance um, he just find, he finds out that like three other teenagers died in the exact same way there's no explanation for their deaths it's just classified as like heart attacks so he kind of investigates why this happened um, if you've seen the movie you already know about 
a certain videotape and that is obviously also what happens in this book so that's what that's what we follow okay so he his investigation kind of leads him to this resort where he then finds a videotape and if you've seen the movie or know what the ring is basically about you'll know that the videotape has a very big significance <laughs> to the plot of the story i thought it was very interesting very well done um, i really liked how it ended i can't remember if the the hollywood movie ended in the same way i think it did end very similarly but I like the ending. I really like the ending. It's such a powerful ending. Um, but yes, the book was creepy, thriller, everything. But there's a lot, of, a lot I didn't like with this book. The misogyny is very ripe in this book, and I think that's what a lot of people thought of this book. It's quite misogynistic. Um, the way they talk about a woman, the way our main character talks about his own wife, just it's not nice to read about. Like. It's weird. It's weird to read about it like that. Um, there's also, they mention like rape and sexual assault a lot. And it's just like, so like casually, it's like, oh, hmm, what you gonna do? This is life. Ugh. And it's not taken very seriously at all, which is just weird for me. I really strongly disliked both our main characters. And I don't need to like a main character to like the book, but they're both like really awful in such a way that I didn't care whether they lived or died. So that kind of takes away from the stakes of the book because I want to be worried about these characters, you know? I want to have my heart like palpitating a bit, you know? But that doesn't happen if I literally don't care whether they live or die because they're such terrible people. Um, what a lot of people said about this book, some of the reviews that I've seen of this book, is that they don't like the writing style because it goes into detail. It'll be like, okay, I was at the train station, I went through the door and I did this and I did that exactly after doing this. It is written kind of, it gives you a lot of detail, but I didn't mind that. Um, where it does get difficult is if this guy's just describing the highways and the road they had to take and then after the road, which turn off they had to take. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Um, it's a very easy start into the horror genre, so if you aren't a horror reader like myself, I don't read a lot of horror, so I'm trying to get into the genre, and I think this is a very good book to start that, because like I said, it's not too scary. I didn't want to read it every night, but because, you know, sometimes I got scared, but it's not too scary, and I think that is like a good a good way to introduce you into a genre, you know? You, you know what everything's about, but it's not too it's not too graphic, it's not too scary, and it's an interesting story. There's a big mystery, and I like the mystery element of it. That was, kept it interesting. The next book I'm going to talk about is also one that I wanted to read for the Asian reader fan. It's also by a Japanese author, um, and I think it's, it's very famous. <laughs> but that is Death Note, um, volume 1 and 2. Well, this is the first book in the, like, the Death Note Black edition. But this book itself contains volume 1 and 2, so I read both volumes and really loved it. I was I was invested. I was thoroughly invested. Again, I gave it 4 stars. So in Death Note, we follow this young boy. He's like 17. He disc, um, His name's Light, and he finds a Death Note, which is a book um, where you write names in, and every name you write in, that person will die. You can also kind of like specify the way they should die in the book. But he picks it up, uh, a death god, also known, I think, as a Shinigami. A Shinigami, which is a death god, drops the death note in the human world because he just kind of wants to see what people do with it. He's bored. He's like, I want to be entertained by the humans. Which is just a very great element throughout the book because throughout this book, this Shinigami is just like chilling and it's very funny. I thought it was funny at least. Light finds this book and he's decided that it is kind of, he makes it his mission to rid the world of criminals but he might go a bit too far in doing that he's very smart and we get to follow him and all the plans he makes and the, the schemes he come up he comes up with to try and get away with everything he's doing and not to be discovered it's just that's the base part of this book um obviously obviously as he kills more and more criminals the police become suspicious they know something's happening so it turns into this huge investigation and light just kind of has to avoid being caught or being exposed as this killer murderer and it definitely reads <laughs> like a series like when you come to the end little little problems come up and they get solved so it's not like you kind of have to i think continue with the series if you want the entire story. I 
I'm definitely going to read book, getting book two. I've already ordered my book two so that I can read volume three and four. Um, yeah, just fun. I don't know. I don't think there's something specific I could say about this. It still wasn't like my favorite series, but also I'm just, this is like the first manga I think I've read. Yeah, this is the first manga I've read. So obviously it's not a style I'm familiar with and that's something I have to get used to. So obviously like, you know, it takes time. It takes time. I didn't think I'd get invested in the lives of the characters, but I actually really did, and that was also something that was unexpected, yet enjoyable. If you're looking for something new, something different, um, then this would be a good one to pick up. It's a good story. The last book I'm going to be talking about is called A Fire Like You by Upile Chisala, who is a Malawian author, I believe. Okay, yes, she's, um, she's an activist and sociologist from Malawi, and this is her third poetry collection. Her first two are called Nectar and Soft Magic, and then this one, A Fire Like You, was only released this year, and it was amazing. It was so good. And what I'm realizing is that her poems just, or her poetry collections rather, just keep getting better and better and better. So this poetry collection is divided, I think, into four sections. The sections are called Wound, Hunger, Swoon, and Sister. My favorite by far was the first section called Wound. It was so good. She really had some very strong one-liners in there. They were very powerful. Um, obviously, she had some longer poems. A lot of them have to do with family and the bonds we have. Uh, the section called Swoon was my least favorite, but that was because it's about kind of falling in love and getting your heart broken. It doesn't speak to me, but all the others were just brilliant. There was a specific poem where she talks about, to her grandmother, and she talks about how she's become kind of a disappointment, but I say disappointment because it is how your parents would view you as a disappointment, perhaps if you're not what they wanted or expected you to be, you know, if you kind of break out of the mold a bit. Because um, she's talking to her grandmother about how she might not be this traditional woman or she might not be doing the things that are expected of her, but she's still a good person. And that was just like, that was a very beautiful poem to me. I found it so, so, so beautiful. You know, if you're in the mood for a good poetry collection, I highly suggest that one. It's so powerful, beautiful. She definitely keeps improving with each and every collection she puts out, which is great. I love to see the growth. Um, her first one, I think her first one was Soft Magic. It was already good, you know, it was a good collection. Um, ne Nectar, even better. A Fire Like You, wow. Okay, um, this is the end of the video. It's definitely longer than I wanted it to be, but I you know I just thought I'd tell you about the books that I read recently. And if you have read any of them or plan on reading any of them, let me know. And thank you so much for watching this video. And I'll see you again later.